much. Then came you mean when the- you could drive with an open bottle of alcohol between your legs? Like <laughs> yeah, that, and no seatbelt. Yeah, yeah, back in the day. Yeah, no yeah. seatbelt, and there was no Got car it. seat for the children <laughs> in the back. That's exactly right. She <laughs> longs sling. For the, yeah. She longs for the freedom of yesteryear. Uh, I'm all, uh, <laughs> for country, then came all the pity for illegal immigrants or later drug addicts driving without a license or insurance. Of course, no pity for those who follow the rules and get hit and have their vehicles destroyed or worse killed, all with no chance of collecting from them and having to pay deductible out of pocket. <laughs> she, yeah, she, 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 <laughs> she goes on. She didn't use the word woke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was too. You know what? It's time for retraction. I'm Antoine. And I'm Jamie. We are reversing course through discourse here on the pod. Otherwise known as a podcast that hopes you stay cool out there, San Francisco. Oh, is San Francisco experiencing some warm weather? I just threw it out there because that's the Anchorman reference. Oh, uh, is it San Francisco? Yeah. Isn't San Diego? God dang it! Isn't it San Diego? It's San Diego. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know what? We're keeping it in. <laughs> We're doing it live. Oh. Screw it. We'll do it live. We don't have the we don't have the funds to edit it in post. Nope. You stay All classy, right. San Diego. That's it. Yeah, San Diego. That's it. It's San Diego. Ah, well, it's hot. Wow. It's hot here on the East Coast. That's hot everywhere. That's what I've learned. It's hot in the UK. UK's had it, unprecedented uh, record numbers of uh, UK, Spain, uh, France, uh, Germany. It's all like 104 over there. But it's even worse for the UK weeks. because they don't invest in uh, air conditioning for most homes. So none of those countries do, though. Oh, uh, really? Because Spain is always hot. I assume that Spain would. I can't say Spain, but I know France and Germany. Oh, really? The folks that okay. I've spoken with. Yeah, they don't, they have, don't AC. have it. Okay. And some of them don't even have fans. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's unprecedented. Not, not I remember when it. I when I stayed there and I was staying in some Airbnbs. Mm-hmm. Um, they they were like laughing at me because I had to confirm with everyone that where we went. I was like, "Do you have a fan? Like, I need a fan. Have to have a fan." And we had to pass on some places because um, fan was hard to come by. Oh wow! Okay. All right, you're you're a hard man to please. You're a fan man. I can't man sleep when it's hot. Fan. I can't sleep when it's hot. I don't like to sweat when I'm sleeping. I get that. I get that. You know, I get that. It's uncomfortable. No, there's no one who enjoys it. There's no one who likes to wake up in a pool of their own sweat and says, you know what? That was a great night's sleep. That was a, that was a good night's rest. No, and I'm just going to let these, I'm just going to let these sheets air dry and I'm going to do it again tonight. Yeah, yeah. No one wants to do that. And you're on vacation. No, no one wants to do that. No, I don't know. All right. So I got an update. I got an update. Ooh, go for people, it. From our last episode, because you were so f- Freaking puzzled by the idea of crosswalks that are raised. That I did some research and I found out, lo and behold, guess who's raising the crosswalks? San Francisco. Nope. Good old New York City. Wow, and you just left. I know. That's I know it's bad. really sad. It really is. I, I was really looking forward to that. <laughs> I never would have thought in a million years they would ever get their, their crap together in order to pull that off, but they did. Raising crosswalks to make deadly intersections safer in New York City, city officials want to install 100 raised cross, crosswalks every year as part of a larger effort to redesign dangerous intersections. Every, I, like, I, it almost makes me laugh now that I've had like three seconds to actually let that hit me. Okay. If anyone's ever driven in New York City, and I assume you mean Manhattan, or do you mean some of the other boroughs? No, the other boroughs. Yep, the other boroughs. Oh, so not Manhattan. Because Manhattan, it, it's, a, it's a joke. Like, I mm-hmm. laugh at Because that's like saying that you're going to start prosecuting people for jaywalking. There are constantly cars barreling through the, the crosswalks. Yeah, but you can't if you're the crosswalks raised. Yeah, I'll we'll say. That's, that's the whole point. I just feel like we'll see a lot of cars without front bumpers. Yeah, yeah well, back. Yeah, without the back with that back bumpers, most likely. Uh, a lot of ruined axles, just a lot yeah. of screeching and and uh, <laughs> and igniting on the asphalt as the uh, as the muffler just uh, drags along the ground. Stuff like that. Is that what you're trying to say? Will just be just, a common I, occurrence. I'm curious to see. I listen. Anything to make Manhattan easier to drive in. I'm a fan of. Um, as crazy as New Jersey drivers might be, I give all the credit in the world to people who can who can drive through Manhattan on a daily basis. And the story, which is courtesy of the New York Times, uh, 
Mayor Eric Adams wants to raise hundreds of crosswalks across New York amid a surge in traffic violence during the pandemic, in part because of an epidemic of speeding and reckless driving. Citywide, a total of 273 people, including 125 pedestrians, were killed in crashes last year, the highest number of traffic deaths since 2013, according to city records. Hmm. That's interesting. Was there any information on the traffic deaths? What more do you need? Were they because would would a crosswalk have pre- a crosswalk a raised crosswalk would that have prevented uh, any num- any percentage of these deaths? Um, just curious, like, hmm. do they? W- was there any like circumstance around it? Was it well, always someone make- crossing the road and getting hit by a car? Yeah, I mean, that, I yeah, know. I mean, I, I'm not. Or is this I, just like I, a typical po- political stat that's like super yeah. vague and we're just going to swim in the ambiguity and well, lead people on, but then leave enough room to backtrack if anyone tries to call us out? Well, look here. Look, the article says raised crosswalks have been shown to make streets safer elsewhere. But in New York, a city with roughly 40,000 intersections, there are just 17 of them, which I didn't know. I can't believe there are there are actually some in the city. 17. Wow. That's amazing. So starting this year, which is 2022. Uh, the city plans to add 100 raised, uh, which we uh, which we just went over. Uh, per- uh, and then uh, they're trying; they're targeting the most dangerous intersections first. Uh, particularly- I was going to ask you that: yeah. which neighborhoods are they happening in? Uh, they didn't say here. They just said that their particularly pure, uh, perilous piece of the streetscape, where a majority of pedestrians are killed or injured, is their main focus. Um, and they, I wonder also- if they'll have to, yeah. like, dig up any historic roads that maybe like cobblestone or anything like that. Yeah, I'm not Would that sure. be an issue? Yes. You guys well, preserve that stuff? No, no. They well, well. The issue with raised crosswalks is that you have to accommodate uh, drainage. Drainage is usually your biggest. Um, I don't know. Naysayer oh, I to doing that. it. Uh, so they so they definitely will have to work around that. And I think that's the that's probably the biggest impediment uh, is just to make sure that proper drainage can occur uh, oh. wherever they put them in. Um, that is interesting. Yeah, I guess you would get some pooling. Is, yes, that's exactly. Is what New happens. York? Yeah. Is New York? It's like hilly, right? Is it? Is it? It's not. It, it is. is it yeah. It's a, I mean, it's a, It's a, It's an yeah. island. It's uh. So yeah, it's mountainous, like most islands. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, there's just a lot of anecdotal stories, uh, but uh, but overall, uh, that th- this is uh, this is going to be part of it, and they're going to do some increased uh, traffic enforcement, uh, but it's coming. So. Uh, so before the nukes come. At least the pedestrians can cross the road safely to get back inside. That's correct. Sit inside. Yeah. And watch the news for further instruction. Research study. Yep, that's exactly right. Research studies have shown that raised crosswalks can increase the visibility of pedestrians and reduce traffic speeds and crashes, according to traffic engineers and experts. In New York, pedestrian in- injuries have typically declined after a raised crosswalk was installed. So that kind of answers your question a little bit. There is there is already anecdotal evidence to suggest that raised crosswalks do inhibit the um, increased risk of being hit by a car uh, when crossing the street. And, uh, and they said that raised crosswalks are popular because they can be relatively quick to install and inexpensive. I still, and it's just like a larger speed bump, right? That's correct. Although I'm going to throw this random thing out there. I don't see them being called speed bumps anymore. They're always speed humps. Were they never speed bumps? I do not know. Okay. I do, not know. Do, do, do you know what I'm talking about at all? I, the signage always says speed hump now. I didn't know that. I didn't know oh, that. Yeah. Now, what I did think was interesting uh, is that the comment section was uh, was not as enthusiastic as I was. I I was you know I was I was pounding the ground. I was raising my fists. I was doing anti crosswalk crowd coming out strong. Anti, you know that, that this is uh, this is the problem. You know, anytime you try to do something that is a little out of the norm, a little out of the box. Um, Back in people, my day, we just looked both ways. That type of thing. It is. It's basically kind of like that. Yeah, actually, nice. <laughs> it's, it's it's a lot of <laughs> these idiots these was, days can't even look where they're going. They're right. all down. Well, when I was a kid, screen. we yeah. when I was a kid, we didn't even need the crosswalk. We were just barreled through the uh, intersection, uh, unaided by any kind of signage, and uh, and the kids that made it survived. You know, and that's how you know that's just that that's that's Darwinism. That's that's should that's all the, the should all the drainage grates be elevated now so people don't walk on them? That type of thing. We're just gonna just gonna raise all of the hazards. I know what so it mean. 
the what do the blind need uh need noise alerts when crossing the street too i mean what, where does it stop <laughs> where does it stop who are we who else do we need to help uh cross the road so i thought this was amazing um <laughs> i had um helen here uh and you know it's because it's public you know you you write on helen, forum. helen helen from new jersey <laughs> <laughs> comment <laughs> she writes in almost all the recent deadly accidents in new jersey or in new york the drivers are unlicensed or had their licenses revoked or suspended add in the unregistered unregistered vehicles no insurance and bogus licenses often I know bogus where this is going. temporary licenses <laughs> i'm old enough to remember when this was rare and people were afraid to get caught driving without a license or insurance <laughs> then came you mean when you the- could drive with an open bottle of alcohol between your legs like <laughs> yeah that, and no seatbelt yeah, yeah back in the day yeah no yeah. seatbelt and there was no Got car it. seat for the children <laughs> in the back that's exactly right she longs sling the, yeah she longs for the freedom of yesteryear uh i'm all uh <laughs> they came all the pity for illegal immigrants or later drug addicts driving without a license or insurance of course no pity for those who follow the rules and get hit and have their vehicles destroyed or worse killed all with no chance of collecting from them and having to pay deductible out of pocket <laughs> she yeah, yeah she just she, she, <laughs> <laughs> she goes on it. She didn't use the word woke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was too. You know why? I, you know why I started to read this one because it's actually the number one comment. That's why I started to read it. It has the most recommended shares. Oh, uh, Helen has from it. New Jersey. Her vote counts just as much as yours. Well, yeah, get apparently. out there and vote. Well, I mean, I know what I'm up against now. If I start <laughs> pounding the pavement about uh, raised crosswalks in Jersey, it looks like the folk over here are none too. Uh, none too kind on it. They uh, they definitely are not shining upon the cross. I mean, it's an interesting take. Helen could have said, show me that this solution will mitigate the statistics, will lower the statistics of deaths and injury. And is that where my taxpayer dollar should go? First of all, Helen is in New, in New Jersey, not even New York. So interesting that this is the hill she wants to die on. But the the default to i don't know talk about the unlicensed like does she have any sources <clears throat> i don't want to poo poo all over helen of helen new jersey's no idea she has no, no sources, sources. Nope. so she's just throwing out statistics all, that just, all this all these how she deaths feels. are caused by unlicensed drivers unlicensed and such i know what she's getting at i'm sure um th- that's what's causing all of this mayhem yep not yeah. overcrowded cities with with poor pedestrian zones and walkways. Majority of the comments have to do with the desire for increased policing and enforcement of existing laws as you opposed know, I was to- gonna say we should just get more guns. I mean, clearly, if <laughs> pedestrians were walking on, around with on guns the, on the crosswalks, that's exactly yeah, if, right. If everyone Snipers. had a gun on the yeah. on the roofs, yeah, shoot out the tires. That's right. Get the yeah. spike strips. You know, yeah. you get the spike strips out. Uh, yeah. It's militarize all the pedestrians, and we probably won't have as many um, crosswalk any, violations. Any car, any car that hits a pedestrian, immediate bullet to the head. Oh God, Judge Dredd, I am the law. Just like yeah, that. I mean, we should just judge dread it. Yeah, just you know, judge dread it. Put a put a a street marshal on every corner. That'll 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 fix it. I mean, I, yeah, it's it's someone taking talking points for other various nonsense and applying them to this. I'm assuming because it's a Democratic mayor. I'm assuming, I don't know, like what. That's a silly thing to say. I mean, obviously she's misinformed, but it's a silly thing to bring up because she's not citing anything and she's just talking from her own bias. Well, the, so. I mean, the thing is, it's not she's not alone. Everyone, literally every comment has some variation of of what she's saying uh, to the point of what a waste of money this is. Uh, I can't believe they're wasting our money to do this. <clears throat> uh, which is, you know, that, that it's just that's it's a that. legitimate. I, I want to say it's a legitimate thing to say. Is this what we should be spending our money on? I understand it may be beneficial, but of all the things that should be fixed, is this what we should be focused on? So I understand that challenge um, to say that it's not going to work because everyone that commits these acts are unlicensed or, you know, whatever she was listing off. 
I mean, without a citation, I don't, you know, it's like a bogus argument, but I'm not going to say that people can't challenge it. Now, I'm probably the people likely to troll this story are the ones that are going to bring up those other things. I don't know. Are, are there, is anyone else saying anything other than like fiscal responsibility? Are they bringing up any statistics, any data to say that this isn't where we should be focusing our effort? TJ from the Bronx says, how about fixing public transit and only allowing cars for truly disabled people in the city? Yes. Yes, we should have them all carry a mark. He said I there's mean, no reason to have a car in Manhattan and you could literally walk across it. Also true for the other boroughs. Buses and subways take you everywhere. Cut car lanes way down and make motorized vehicles. Uh, make more buses only lanes and eliminate street parking. Yep, but that's what you end the thing is. I actually agree with him. Street street parking is. I was gonna mess. say I like you agree that that's something. I'm gonna that say that, that the city won't like, do it. I feel. What was the thing, TJ? Uh, TJ from the Bronx. I, I feel like TJ is more point of arrival. This is where we want to get to. We yeah. want to get to TJ's oh, vision. I like, that. I like that point. But I don't yeah. think I don't think TJ's vision can be realized in our lifetime. No, no, especially because the city needs the money from the uh, from the car from street parking. Um, but he does want to assign more police to the regular walking beats in the neighborhoods, and uh, so they can keep an eye on things and put police on bicycles. So. Yeah. Um, again, I'd have to go back to how the, the circumstance of these accidents, because is a beat cop on the corner going to change anything? No, probably not. Yeah, probably not. Right. Like, probably not. Probably not. You would need uh, it's I don't think it's an awareness issue of, oh, I'm glad that that uniformed officer was standing there. Otherwise, I may not have noticed all the pedestrians crossing the crosswalk as I'm barreling into them. I don't think that's the issue. I don't think it's an awareness issue. I'm gonna I'm gonna read one more uh, and then I'll let it I'll let it die because it, it really is just more regurgitation of the same. But I do like Jerry V from New York City's take. He writes simple. He's got one sentence. It says, and it's got 14 recommends. So people really enjoyed his his take. The cars will go through the speed bumps at high speed, then fly through the air and hit pedestrians on the way down. So he thinks it's gonna be worse, you know, he airborne he, an he, airborne he, attack. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's similar to my comment where I said everyone's going to lose a bumper, so I can't. I can't knock. What was his name? Uh, Jerry V from New York. Jerry V. So Jerry V brings up an interesting point. He thinks that people will speed up at the crosswalks to get air because they would have to know the crosswalks are there. That's the only reason why they would speed up. Well, and no, you I need think to you, speed up because I, I you're think, going to lose. You're going yeah. to lose energy if you're going at normal speed, taking a turn, and you hit that bump. So you're not going to get the air. So if Jerry V. Mm -hmm. thinks that they're going to get air. That means they're aware of these. And, and despite it all, they are going to get airborne and they're going to yeah. speed up, yeah. get air, somehow get enough. I mean, the, the, the physics of it is a little wonky. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't kinda, think this is, this is not how it works. But maybe, this, maybe if there was another crosswalk close enough down downhill. I don't know. Kind of like. It's a, I just don't think it's ever happened in the history of speed bumps. So uh, I don't know where a lot of these people are getting these uh, these images of uh, hitting these walkways, these raised walkways and like plowing through pedestrians on the on the backside, because uh, it's just we've had speed bumps in this country for decades. And I don't think I've ever heard of a story like that. So No, I don't think you're going to get the, the ramp up that you would need to get some airtime. It's just. Uh, wow, people really just throw out anything. It's 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 you have to contend with a lot, I think, when you do with city planning and city management. And um, I'm really thankful that that's not my career path because I don't think I could bear it. And then that that's why I'm. But are <laughs> the people suffering? Sad. Is it that is it that they're suffering and they're saying, "Listen, my day to day is hard," and then you hear about crosswalks and you're like, "That is not going to help me," and that's why they care so much. Do you think that's what it is, or do you think it's? Hey, there's a Democrat in there. I'm a Republican, so I'm just going to troll this person today. Yeah, I don't know. I really can't tell you. I can't tell. It's it's, it's too. There's just too much. There's, I wonder if uh, they have other comments. Is it the type of thing where you like click on their history and you know the the, the first one you read from the from Helen? Mm -hmm. I wonder if she's uh, a frequent commenter or not. Yeah. There is a person from Canada here that is basically affirming that they work in a very civilized manner um so there's that 
it seems like people outside of the country are a little less alarmist with their uh, their detailed responses. A little more even keeled. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. So, yeah, anyway. So anyway, I mean, that's, that's the thing is that's what's happening. You brought that's what's happening, up. People. I, I've seen raised crosswalks like that. I've seen that. I don't know where I've seen it, but I've seen it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you slow down like you you see the r- road is raised when you're approaching it and you slow down and you go over it. Yeah, it's a logical response. Yeah. I okay. want to say in like parking lots, I see it. I'm, I, look, I've never seen one in the U.S. So, um, yeah, I, I want to say really, like I've seen it in like parking lots or some kind of commercial complex um, where I've seen that kind of thing before. I don't remember where. I mean, look, not have been here, but here's 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 the reality. As as fu- as much fun as it is to to enjoy this fan this fanciful life that a lot of people enjoy living in in this in this modern society we call a country, uh, the statistics are just there. Uh, there are plenty of them in in Europe, and uh, if you put them in, it makes it easier for pedestrians to cross the street unharmed, and they're incredibly visible for drivers to take note of them and they enforce slow slowdowns in a way that no amount no amount of signage could ever replicate uh that that's just that there's just enough facts based on what's already been implemented in europe to satisfy that requirement so i'm excited that they're coming this is i don't know what everyone else is to be crazy and, and think that you know be adding street um, adding raised crosswalks is allowing immigrants, illegal immigrants, to like run free and be. Yeah, that's basically what 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 Helen was getting. Yeah, at. so it's like you could you could you could you could build any world you want to exist within, but uh, the, the the facts, the reality, <laughs> the real world, <laughs> there is just going to make it easier for people to cross the street and and be safer uh, throughout the city. So I think it's fantastic. I actually applaud Eric Adams, and I wanted to give him that because I actually am really critical of a lot of his stances. Uh, since being elected, but this is one where I cannot fault him, and I think that it's a fantastic initiative, and uh, and it's really going to change. Uh, it's going to change very various aspects of the city. It's going to make it. Um, it's going to make it safer for like even children to just simply f- like for parents to feel like their kids can go, uh, you know, uh, go to school or go to activities without necessarily fearing uh, that they're having to cross a very dangerous intersection or a wide based intersection. Uh, it's going to it's going to do things like that. It's going to free up uh, what children can do, what kids can do, what, what everyone could do in the city, because um, you don't always have that terror and that fear uh, from a lot of these dangerous intersections. I mean, I don't know if anyone's ever lived near a dangerous intersection, but it it, it, it is uh, it, it, it could be um, I don't want to say claustrophobic, but it can be very inhibiting because people know that that intersection is very dangerous. And so, you you know, you're not going to let your kids go out. You're not going to you're going to be very mindful about. Uh, you know, when you're crossing it or who's crossing it. And I don't know, I'm just saying it's I think it's a boon. I think it's a, a good, easy, quick win for any mayor or anybody who wants to do some progressive change within the city. You know, you get enough buy enough initiative. And I, I yeah, so I applaud it. That's all. That's all. That's all I wanted to get across. I just think that it's yeah. a it's a fantastic. Thing. I, I wonder what the turnaround time is on a crosswalk like that. Like they get it done in a day. Or are they going to be shutting these? I don't know. I mean, for I mean, like I think a days. I, I think that's well. I mean, I don't know, but I mean, I think it's enough to you know we could kind of work our way back because they're looking at a hundred a year. So you know, I guess you could say that that they're that's they're putting that in the allotment of how long it would take to install one, uh, you know, at a, at a particular intersection. So I mean, yeah. So it takes as long as a hundred. A hundred is what you could probably get done in a year. So however long that might be, you could probably do the math. Nice. Well, congrats, New York City. Yeah, and it's a follow back. It. Yeah, it's a follow back to our last episode to say that you know it's real, it's coming, America. You know, and then listeners, get out to New York City if you can. Walk across one of those, take a picture of yourself, yeah. tag us on Twitter. We love to hear or love retweet to see it. it. Love to see it. You know, dance in the crosswalk because you know what, you could be seen. So you don't have like to worry a about being album hit. thing. Yeah, I think it's gonna be great, All and right. it keeps speeds down. That's the other thing, keeps speeds down, which I think is another fantastic aspect. So anyway. What do you got? New York is New York's weird with the speeding. It's like it seems like you're going fast, but you're like not really going you're fast. Not. It's just like spurts. You're, you're of topping energy. at like forty or thirty at any yeah, time in the city. But the thing is, you're still ten miles above the speed limit. Which so, yeah. What do you got? All right. So we texted about this a little bit, but since you are a bit of a self-driving enthusiast, 
thought mm-hmm. it might be fun to rehash this on the pod. New Jersey Transit, another East Coast story, is piloting a 100% electric autonomous vehicle program to solve for what it calls the first mile, last mile problem, which is getting you to and from the train or bus. So, of course, this is convenient for most, but it also actually provides some critical shuttle services for the elderly and disabled who can't easily get to public transportation. The pilot program is called AVATAR, which stands for Autonomous Vehicle Assessment, Testing, and Research. The pilot program will have a safety attendant aboard the 15-passenger shuttle at all times and consist of two testing phases. Phase one is a closed course test um, at a former airport in New Jersey, which actually started in April of this year and should last about six months. And the purpose of phase one is to test basic functionality, collect data, and allow emergency services to interact with the AVs. Phase two is deployment on public streets and transporting actual passengers to their destinations that they can hail through an app. The purpose here in phase two will be to evaluate how the shuttles operate with other cars, bikes, and pedestrians. So AV shuttles will deploy in in phase two in small towns, um, in downtown areas, on roads with posted speeds of about 25 miles per hour, and they'll be installing signs and stops to help integrate with the community. So kind of what I texted you, a little bit of an update. I know you had some criticisms i mean i had had reservations the thing is at the end of the day i'm very excited that for any initiative uh to be going forward that makes public transport easier and more accessible for the for a greater number of people from that perspective i think it's fantastic so i think that that is awesome my criticism which is i think the more the main criticism which was also addressed a little bit by the piece is that you know it's not necessarily that the cars need to be autonomous it's that the routes are congested because there are not bus only lanes that exist in many of these places for the door to door that first last mile and that's and because a, a bus has to sit in traffic any just the same way if you were driving your car most people are saying i'd rather just be in my nice car and listening to music with ac on as opposed to be sitting in a bus you know shared by other people so you know, it just adds to the traffic. It doesn't alleviate anything. That, that That's the problem with, with modern day buses, the way that at least they're implemented in this country. If you don't have a bus lane, it doesn't, that's what I'm saying. That's not going to change because you took, a, you took the driver away. It, that, that robot's going to be sitting in traffic just like everybody else. And they're going to, and everyone else is going to be less like, cars, though, isn't it? You get a why full is it bus. Less cars. No, because each not. one of those passengers could have been its own car. Yeah. But my point is, is that the incentive, like the, the, it's not pleasant. So people don't want to use it. So therefore, there are just as many cars plus a bus. That's what, that's buses, what I've taken buses to the city, at least from New Jersey. They're full. Right? Yeah. Empty. Yeah. The, that, that bus to the, to the city. Sure. I mean, that, that's a commuter. That, that's your commuting at that point. But I mean, yeah. like in terms of, if you're doing it for travel or to a, a destination where you can park, the, the 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 bus that we're talking about here should be taking you to that bus terminal because that bus, I assume, does not pick you up at your house. No, it, it says, yeah, it's to your house, to your oh, door. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. To your door. Um, now, it did also mention stops. So there may be options where you could go to a stop, but it's supposed to be to your door. I mean, that's what it has stated. So oh, the, I think they're well, going to. Okay, sorry. Go on. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was asking the the existing bus that you would take to the city used to stop at your door. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, at a bus right. stop. This is the to autonomous drive to a bus stop. The right. autonomous one would go to your door, but it also said something about it would integrate some stops and things like that. So there may be options, mm-hmm. and maybe that could be for more apartments and things like that, like apartment complexes, or I mean, townhouses. I think, I think at that level, you know, it de- definitely people are going to say, "All right, maybe." Because it's coming to my door, I'd rather not drive to the uh, parking lot for the public transport. But that's that's usually the issue I see in you know suburban areas or you know, areas like Jersey that are feeding into a main metropolis like New York City. Is that you? Most people have to drive to the first port of call. They have to drive to that train station in order to then get the public transport to go to to work, and that creates traffic. I mean, it's it's a miserable drive because everyone's doing the same thing, and it 
you know, it's not really alleviating a lot of the problems because you're still creating more carbon emission by having all these drivers sitting idle trying to get to the public transport. And you're actually bringing it to a choke point. You're bringing it to a single destination. So you're overwhelming that infrastructure. Exactly right. Exactly right. So I hear you there. Right. So so you brought up you brought up examples in our text messages where you said they kind of piloted similar things and it failed. In, in, some, in some places, in other cities. But here's the thing. They have a really, su- not, I don't want to say really successful, but I remember this. South Australia uh, has a bus. South Australia's driverless bus, Murray, on a brand new track. That was back in 2021. So they've been doing it. I don't know if they have bus only lanes out there, but that's been a successful pilot, uh, basically, for exactly what Jersey's trying to implement. So it, it, there are there is precedent. There are. Other so what were the failures the then? what were the ones that failed before? What are the distinctions? It wasn't buses. It was um, like Uber's driverless car. I think that killed somebody. Um, and then like I think uh, Tesla is still kind of working around their true driverless automation um, well, you're saying it couldn't it couldn't engage it couldn't go on roads yeah yeah driving. most of these cars have trouble and it, this this wouldn't be an issue in a place like australia because they use roundabouts but <laughs> in a country where you four-way stops a left turn is incredibly challenging for ai because they're looking for the safest moment to pass in, in order to make that left turn and it may not be necessarily it may never come it, a, yeah, exactly. That's part of it. It may not actually come to pass. <laughs> you might have to squeeze your tires every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. There's, so there's definitely, yeah, there's 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 those aspects of it. Uh, it's just incredibly, it's one of the more dangerous turns you can make and, uh, and AI just still have trouble doing it. So I, it'll be interesting to see what they come to, uh, you know, what they decide to uh, to do in order to uh, to basically work around that, that, that issue. Because they said they would put up signs and things like that. And then we kind of went back and forth where, we were talking about well, what does autonomous? What do autonomous vehicles need in terms of infrastructure? Mm-hmm. And I had said, based on a previous pod episode we'd done, you know, you have to integrate it. At least in my mm-hmm. naive mind, you would have to integrate it into existing infrastructure because it's unlikely that we're going to revamp everything, especially That's in exactly rural right. areas. That's so exactly you'd have to right. put up some type of devices along roadways that are giving the autonomous vehicle more data a lot of inputs Mm -hmm. traffic ahead whatever it may be road conditions i don't know whatever it is speed but more than what a visual sign would give a human um, because there's only so much you can get from that so but then you had thought that it may it needed something different where it needed its own barriers its own like barrier roadways and things like that i wasn't necessarily again i wasn't necessarily proposing that to the ai i was simply saying that in general because it is still a vehicle on the road it is still susceptible to anything that a normal vehicle would be susceptible to which includes immense amounts of traffic based on just having no specialized route that it could take that you know separates it from the from the pack that's all so do you think the you think it would be like an HOV kind of lane, but I would say, it would be I would, walled off would and it's say. just for these vehicles. Well, so well that, sorry, so yeah. they can't they can't bang around or anything like that. Like they're I just can't. safe. Well, I'm not afraid of the safety. I'm talking it's it's just about it's just about creating an a lane that they have so that way they don't have to sit in traffic. Therefore, more people are gonna want to use them because oh, so it's an incentive. Thing. It's an incentive, absolutely, because it's it's this is so the, it's like like an incentive like carpooling. Exactly. And I was saying that what you would do at that point is you would take, like I said, for the, like, I kind of agreed with you that existing infrastructure is what needs to be repurposed here. HOV lanes are a perfect example. You would take away the HOV lane because you don't need it anymore. And you would give that lane to these autonomous vehicles. So therefore they've got short, they've got these fast tracks to these very desired destinations. And I think that that would implore more people to say, I'd rather just order this car than, uh, you know, then then uh, then use my own vehicle and put miles and wear and tear on it, sitting in traffic trying to get to this place. That that so I think that in that world, these things could be really successful. And I wonder too because they're saying, and of course the program if successful, you know they would they would want to grow it. But it sounds like it really is just for small towns that have a local train or bus station, and it really would be. You know, you're not going over 25 miles an hour. You're it's probably a 15 minute ride or so. And so they're not getting on, you know, for those folks that are familiar with New Jersey, the Garden State Parkway or the New Jersey Turnpike or any kind of large highway like that. So it it sounds like it'll be, you know, for quick rides, very localized. Yeah. But if this for begins now. to take off, exactly. And then once yeah. you're getting into 
all right, well, I'm going to, I live in South Jersey and the only bus that goes to where I need to go is, you know, Mm -hmm. an hour away, 45 minutes away. It's, it could happen. Um, And I'm sure it's something similar in some other States. You need to get on highways and go much, much faster. And then you're at risk of congestion, like you were saying. And I wonder at that point, if it's worth building infrastructure um, and how that would look. It might be. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I can't say for sure, but, uh, but I definitely think it might be when you were saying about giving these uh, driverless cars information, I was even thinking, you know, it doesn't even have to be something on the ground. You really could just have a network of drones that are constantly flying, feeding these vehicles information that, that you do satellites, I guess, but satellites are at risk of weather. There's a lot of, yeah, I think there's a lot of things that that drones would be weather too. Uh, That's sort of, it depends. It depends. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, probably, probably I'll give you that probably. Yeah. Drones probably. But then at that point, I mean, hopefully someday the cars will be communicating with each other. I was going to say that, you know, they've made amazing leaps and bounds in terms of the trucks, the trucks right now. uh, There's a couple of companies out there and I forgive me for not uh, remembering their names. But uh, in the beginning, when uh, Uber was doing their truck, which they've also abandoned, uh, it was a fully designed vehicle. And I think Tesla's was the same thing. It was like a fully designed vehicle that all these truck manufacturers would need, to, not manufacturers, but the basically the trucking industry would need to acquire. They would need to put up you know, massive sums uh, up front in order to acquire these vehicles that are like state of the art and, and built, to, uh, built to be automated. But they uh, basically a, a host of companies have basically sprung up where they just created a box that can go into existing trucks and automate the entire thing. So that's going to revolutionize the game. So you're probably going to oh, wow. see automated trucks sooner than you than even these vehicles, I feel, because they're they're basically just going to put a driver in for safety while the let's call it the black box or whatever, while the box helps uh essentially let's call it the cube. Let's call it the cube. Sure, let's call it the cube. Sure. While the cube uh <laughs> You know, it it gets its tentacles and it, it, into the machinery. You know, it, it spreads out like a spider, and it like like Agent Smith. Like, it gave, like Agent yeah, Smith. That's exactly, just like Agent Smith. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so I think I mean that that's gonna be crazy. And uh, and they've actually experimented with uh, double hauls essentially. So it's like it's not even just because the time you're saving, so the the trucks don't necessarily need to go as fast. So they, they it's basically like it'll be like the the front engine, and then there's like uh another full truck that follows the first lead truck they've been doing things like that and so i mean it's it's good it's gonna be wild what you're you're gonna see in the future in terms of trucking being automated so and i wonder what's coming but then that leads me almost to what you were saying before if trucking becomes more efficient and it advances past other forms of freight i guess you would call it yeah um I wonder then if more companies would opt for truck shipping and then more trucks would be on the road and it would squeeze out, you know, drivers, regular drivers, and it would require then again, infrastructure. Yeah. Um, be. Because yeah, then that, that's a real be more congested. People go less boats, less planes, yeah, less yeah. trains. It's a possibility. If this outpaces advancements in those. Because, I, yeah. Other things go faster, but if these are running around the clock 24 seven and just stopping what they would cool, be. And if they're electric and they got solar panels and never need to, who That's knows? Exactly. Or you have like 200 miles of fueling yeah. trucks, like, like military jets. Yeah. And they're exactly, exactly right. Yeah. They did. They just pull up alongside it. They just and, stick uh, a, a magnetized battery to yeah, your hull and you absorb could the energy. There. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely a drone right. comes and lands on your top. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. No, so, it's, yeah, you, it, it's a crazy future to think of it, but you're right. I mean, I, there would have to be legislation, I think, at some point to limit the amount of trucks that probably could be used at any one given time, because you're right. You would you could ostensibly get on a highway in like Nevada, you know, heading either between Vegas and uh, and California and just get stuck in like a 300 truck convoy. And, and, you know, there's just nowhere around that. So that that those are the kinds it's of things that we need to, too, to be surrounded by so much. I mean, I drive on the truck lanes anyway, but, you know, yeah, it, it's, it's a, it'll be it, a wild it be overwhelming. Scene. Yeah, it'll be a while. Yeah. It, it, and, to, and to the end, you have the added fear to know that these these cars do not have people in them, man. So, so, yeah, you're right. There would have to at some point legislation would have to be enacted to ensure how many of these could be on the road at one. Uh, and, and, you know, the time. saddest thing about all of this, the saddest thing is, you know, back in the day when I was younger and you'd see a truck drive by, you could give him a little toot toot and 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 the truck driver would beep his horn. That's not going to happen anymore, Antoine. I don't think any of this is worth it. 
Wow. I'm, I'm just going to jump on the naysaying bandwagon right now. Stick that one in the comment. You know, how dare we rob our children of that experience? That's a lot nicer than what I thought you were going to say. I thought you were going to say, you know, when truck drivers had licenses and, 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 and weren't <laughs> illegals. <laughs> oh, God. Had proper insurance and could show you their verifications. So if you got into an accident, you weren't I'm left gonna, out of pocket. I'm not going to plagiarize Helen, Antoine. Oh, what okay. Am I? Okay. Now, who do you think I am? No, nah, I got you. You're more upstanding. Got it. Yeah. You're a credible. Yeah, I got my own ideas. Right. I, <laughs> the honking. The honking. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, you got anything else? That's it. Yeah. That's a good one. I like it. So, it's, it's a succinct story. It's a succinct, succinct episode of retraction. There you go, uh, folks. JB, where can they find us? Hit us up, retraction media. Let us know if you like these shorter episodes. Make sure you pick out your favorite episode or just the pod in general and send it to your, your friends, family, anyone that likes politics or science and rate us on your favorite po- uh, podcasting platform. You stay cool out there, San Diego. We're at San Francisco. No. <laughs> <laughs> Retraction out. Out.